Good morning, everyone. I know folks are still coming in, gathering, so we just welcome you to Christ the King Sunday. That's why we have the white pyramids. It's always the Sunday before Advent. Can you believe that? Advent takes us to Christmas. We're right there. So if you'll take out your bulletin, uh, everyone, and hopefully you picked up one. If not, you might want to go back to the Narthex and get one for our announcements. And Miss Irene will fill us in. Irene? Good morning, everyone. I know we just celebrated Thanksgiving, and I know we all have a lot to be thankful for, but I think it's good to wake up and go to bed every night with thankful thoughts on our hearts and in our minds. So let's continue with that today. I want to welcome everyone here, and especially new visitors. If you're here for the very first time, when you exit, if you would please go to the left to the uh, Center for Guests, they have a gift for you that will um, remind you of your time here today. We hope you like it and come back often. The registration pads are at the end of the pews. They're the red booklet. And if you would take that tablet, sign it, pass it down to your pew neighbor and let them do the same. We'll have information for our office that may be pertinent to us being able to get in touch with you in the future. All the activities for this week are back on. If you look at your bulletin, you see it's full again. There is one correction to the bulletin on the back side where the prayer requests are. It talks about the Donellan Community Singers Concert. It says Monday the 10th. It's actually the 10th is Sunday. So you might want to jot that down on your bulletin so that you know not to come on Monday. <laughs> that would be the 11th. And that would be sad because it's always a wonderful time. Joe, so, um, don't forget that Thursday night we have our dinner and study. That is uh, 5.30. And be sure to sign up at the um, member center over on the right side as you leave so that we'll know how many people are coming and enough food for everyone. Also, there is the Donellan Christmas Parade. I'm not sure what time. Does anybody know what time it is on Saturday? Six o'clock? Okay. We will be participating as a church in that, so we hope you can all come and support not just our church activity, but the whole community. Um, because it's raining today, we don't want our children to go out in the rain, so we're going to have Sunday school next door in the education wing, so when the parents pick up their children, they will go next door, and the security will let you in. We have, uh, let's see, we have a mission moment, and Carol Stroop will get to share that with us. Good morning, church family, those, those here and those joining us online. Uh, December is our last mission month for the year, and it remains Heifer International. Please direct your attention to the screen for a very short video titled, The Power of People, How Heifer International is Ending Hunger and Poverty. At Heifer International, we believe in the power of people, the power to overcome, to flourish, to thrive, and we've seen it firsthand. Since 1944, we've watched more than 39 million people overcome even the greatest of obstacles and move themselves from poverty to power. When a family in poverty is given a goat or a cow, they're given more than an animal. It's an opportunity. It's a chance to start a business, put food on the table, and break the cycle of poverty forever. Heffa works with some of the world's poorest communities. We listen and learn about their problems work with them to create solutions and introduce the tools and training they need for lasting success. Ultimately, we support people to stand strong in their own and discover their power because we know everyone has potential to thrive. All they need is a chance. Learn more today at heifer.org. The video showed us Heifer has reached 39 people, 39 million people, excuse me, since it started in 1944. They provide people an opportunity when they receive an animal, when they teach them, when they train them, 
when they provide tools and when they create solutions for them. Their comment, all have potential to thrive, they just need a chance, and Heifer gives them a chance. This is where your donations go to be used for these people and purposes. In December of 2021, you generously gave donations totaling $1,291.72. And last December, uh, 2022, you gave $1,879.80. That's an increase of $588.08. So kudos to you um, for all your donations and helping those people all over the world. This year, I'm sorry to say, we have no individual heifer boxes to fill. Heifer no longer offers them for our use. So I've made a collection box. It will be out in the narthex from December 3rd to December 31st. And there's a slot on the top you can put your donations in. So collect your coins and your uh, dollar bills at home. Bring them in and put them in the box. But uh, just so you know, it's important to remember that you can also give a donation by check. Make it out to First Methodist Church of Dunellen. And on the memo line, please mark Heifer. So it'll go to the Heifer Project. And you can put those in the offering plate or you can put them in the box. On behalf of the, our mission committee, thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness to Christ and our church. Thank you for your partnership in our mission ministries. Together we are making an eternal impact in our community and the world. Thanks. Let's put our hands together and thank Ms. Carol for being our liaison. $1,800, that's amazing for our church last year. So I hope that you will participate. And I know that all of us, you know, we think about missions, and we know that God has called us to, as, as part of our Christian journey to, to give to missions, but we wonder if 100% goes there. And I want you to know your mission committee researches each of these missions. We have a different one every month. We make sure that the monies that you're given are going to go directly to what is being said. Can we all say amen? Amen. So that'll be out front there. And uh, did you like the way she put on the box? Moo. I thought that was pretty good, Carol, there. Let's all stand together. We open in worship, as you know. And the altar is open. We have our anointers behind the altar rail. This is a beautiful time. If you want to worship in your pews or if you want to come and pray for a moment, you're more than welcome to do that.
worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. My God, that is who you are. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. Heavenly Father, we know that is who you are. You are the way maker. Sometimes it doesn't feel like there's a way in the darkness, the storms of life, but you always bring us through. History shows that. Our own story shows that. Lord, we just thank you for being who you are. Guide us continually now. Thank you for the beautiful opening worship. And may all of God's people say, you may be seated. Do we have any children that can come up and share with me about Christ the King Sunday? I even got Rolo candy. Looks like little crowns. Isn't that great? All righty. Good to see you guys. All righty. We got to begin with our hands in the air. Long, long, long time ago in a faraway place on the Wiflacoochee River. Reverend Bullywing Bullfrog, what's the bullfrog say? There you go, my frog friend. I appreciate that. Bullywing was preaching to the critters about Christ the King Sunday, which is the same thing we're doing right here. And he was talking to them about him being amazing, that he was pure in heart, and that he was merciful. And you know what Junior Gator just said, merciful. He said, is that kind of like what the ball game looked like last night? We were showing mercy. Yes, yes, to them Florida State Seminoles. Well, Bully Wing said, I'm not quite sure that's exactly what it means, but it is very important. Yes, very much. Well, after the service, they had dinner on the grounds. Oh, my goodness, a Thanksgiving feast. Did y'all have a big Thanksgiving? Did you? Was it good? Yes. Well, you know what they had? They had maters and taters. Uh, they had, I yeah. Had you had turkey? Well, they had maters and taters. They had fried lily pads. Do you know what that tastes like? Mm. 
Yes, indeed, Leo, just like fried chicken. They even had Darling Dove cheesecake. It was just delicious. Then they had a game they all played called King of the Mountain. Have you ever played that? Well, for them, it was king of the stump. It was just a stump, and the two turkeys, you were talking about turkeys a few minutes ago, they would gobble, gobble, go. They were always the king. They were just the roughest. They would get up there on top of the stump. And so Bullywink Bullfrog said, well, you know what? The king of kings, the Lord of lords is Jesus, and he is merciful, and he's pure in heart. He said, maybe y'all should let somebody else be king of the mountain and be merciful. Turk Brawler Brothers said, no siree. Then Bully Wink winked over there at the other critters. Can y'all wink? Y'all wink? Y'all wink? He winked at the others and he said, watch this. And you know what he did? He jumped straight up in the air and landed right on the top of the Turk Brawler Brothers' head and made them roll down. Oh, my goodness. And then he was king of the mountain. Yes. Well, yes. But then they were upset. They were upset. And the old Turk Brawler looked at Lurk Brawler and they said, you hit him high, I'll hit him low. And they started up the sides and they were gobbling. Can you gobble with me? Gobble, 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 gobble. Come on, turkeys. Gobble, 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 gobble. And when they got right up to the front, Bullywink jumped again and they smacked into each other and rolled down the stump again. And Bullywink landed on the top of the stump or the mountain. And he said, I told you, I am king of the mountain. And our king is the Lord, and he is merciful. He shows love to us, and he has a wonderful heart, and we call that pure in heart. I think that's your lesson in Sunday school today. Did you know that? Were well, you about to know that? Can you hold my bag on my Rolos? Wait a minute, i got to pray. <laughs> Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your kindness and love. Thank you for being pure in heart and being merciful. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Guys, let's stand up, turn around, greet one another. Remain standing for our scripture reading. Let's gather back to our pews and remain standing, if you will. Miss Irene will give us our scripture reading for the day. Our scripture today is Matthew 25, 31 through 40, Christ the King. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger or invite you in or needing clothing and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated, and if you'll turn your bulletin over for our prayer concerns, I want to begin with our praise reports uh, as we try to do each week. I am so excited. I think Dave and Marilyn um, Bialkowski are here today. They uh, new in our church, took over the um, ministry to the Christmas shoeboxes, the Samaritan Purse. So I called them last night and they said that the number that we have uh, for our own church, 142 boxes came in, which is absolutely amazing. But the whole region that were delivered here that they and their team had to pack up was 1,170 boxes to go share the gospel with the world. Amen. Thank you, Dave and Marilyn. 
Thank you for your wonderful ministry. We truly are a mission church. Now, I don't know if you can praise the Lord for a college football game. So I don't know if you're allowed to do that. And I know that, uh, so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But the lights are so bright in here. I need a hat just as a, so I'm just going <laughs> to. Our prayer concerns today uh, are uh, Bonnie Dotson. Uh, let's keep her in our prayers as she begins to uh, have her treatments. Um, and for, as you saw, Ray was up here at the altar on Tuesday. He begins his chemo as well. I saw Al Gillette up here praying for his son, David. So let's keep uh, David in our prayers. Marty and Kim Ray uh, been in the hospital um, with uh, Marty lost his foot and uh, Kim just had a lot of the, the anxiety and struggles and with her heart uh, ended up in the hospital as well. So let's keep them in our prayers. Wanda Koppel struggling with cancer as well. Um, Don Worley, many of you know they're a new couple in the last few years, Don Worley and his wife, Deb. Deb sings in our chancel choir. Deb has pneumonia in the hospital and uh, Don is very, very sick at the house. So please keep, I told him, I said, anything we can do, please, please let us know. And she's at West Merriam, so in the hospital. Continue to remember Liz Popolowski. We lifted her up last week uh, with her and her daughter. Her daughter's in the hospital, and Liz had a terrible fall and just got out of the hospital herself. We also have a prayer group, brand new prayer group, starting this Tuesday. I want your prayers for uh, 2 o'clock this Tuesday. I'm going to be in the chapel and a couple families are going to be with me, and we're praying for those struggling with dementia, early signs dementia. So we've invited different families in our church, but it's open to everyone. Uh, we're just going to pray for each other. We have a wonderful prayer support group uh, for uh, caregivers over at the uh, library. Miss Linda Topper did a beautiful job taking care of her dear husband, and she continues that ministry. But we just wanted to pray for each other, share with each other. So if any of you'd like to join us again, if you have an extended family member with struggling with dementia, just come be with us and put their name down and we'll pray for them that God's grace will be with us. That's again this uh, Tuesday at two o'clock uh, in the chapel uh, where we'll be meeting. If you have personal prayer requests, I try to mention this each um, Sunday. And Bobby, if you'll go ahead and come to the podium at this time um, to lead us in prayer, uh, fill them out right now. Just take one of those prayer cards and fill them out. And uh, when you leave today, there's offering plates by each of the exit doors. You can just drop them in there, and they'll go right on our email prayer chain. Okay, Bob? Good morning. It's good to, good to see all of you. Before I um, go into our prayer concerns, I I've got two names that um, I'd like to add. Our Jim that plays on our praise team, his ex-wife's husband's brother Nick lived down at St. Pete um, <coughs> took his life so we want to keep Jim and his family um, in our prayers I think Jim said he was 42 He's such a young age but Jim plays a, a part of our worship and we just so grateful to have Jim with us today and he'll be playing behind me during the uh, our prayer and also um, t our Tony here, his his dad's um, better half. Uh, she had a stroke. We want to keep her in our prayers. She's home now, but she's got a rough road ahead. So we want to keep um, her name's Tony. Sherry D. Sherry D. We want to keep Sherry um, also. Uh, in, in our prayers. And the good news is we've got two um, new members. I've, I've got your paperwork filled out. We've got Miss Jeanette in the back and D Don Bounds' mother-in-law. I've got her paperwork filled out. So if you would see me after the service. Um, we, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Somebody say amen. amen. And we, we, we've got two members coming on board, so that's uh, that's good. And, and for our Florida State fans, come on, help me. Somebody help me. Uh, all right. All righty then. All righty. Amen. 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 God is good. And all the time. 
and good. And I want to uh, give you a personal thanks for um, uh, the text that I got in regards to uh, my family. We had a service this weekend. Uh, everything uh, went well. Went according to God's plans. My aunt husband was 95, lived a, lived a great life. And my first cousin, he was 51, um, had some complications, but uh, the good Lord makes no mistakes. Yeah, he's too wise to do wrong. So we, we thankful today to be back in the house once again. And um, so our altar is open, as Pastor Eddie stated, uh, for you to come and stand as I stand today. I'm going to stand for Jim's family. Um, I didn't see Sherry Roberts back. Uh, she texted me, but she's back home. Her brother-in-law got killed uh, a couple of days ago, so she was up there, but she's back. So we want to keep them uh, in our prayers. Again, our altar is open for you to come and stand in the gap for someone that can't stand. As our music plays softly, we will bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we, we're so thankful, we're so grateful. Father, for all that you've done, all that you've given us. Father, you've given us this Sunday another chance to come to a place, Father, where we gather together. And your word says, where two or more gathered, Father, we invited you in. You're welcome here. Father, be in our presence. Somebody come today for a cause. Somebody walk through the front doors today, Father, for a purpose. Only you understand. Father, you've answered our requests. You've answered our call. You've been there. That's why we call on you, Father. You've been there. You understand what we go through. But your word says you put no more on us than we can bear. Father, you've been our deliverer. You've been our healer. And all the names that our pastor lifted up today, Father, give them comfort. Give them the relief that they're, they're so longing for. Father, we praise your holy name. We lift you on high. And right now we say thank you for your goodness. We say thank you for your mercy that you have stored upon us. Your word said you never leave us nor forsake us. That's why we worship you. That's why we give you praise. You walk with us when we walk in total darkness. You pick us up, Father, when we're falling down. You lift our spirits when there's sadness. And Father, after listen to our prayer concerns, our prayer requests, some of our hearts are a little heavy. But we cast our burdens, we cast our cares upon your feet. Father, and by your stripes we are healed. We're claiming victory for all of those that are in need today. Father, we thank you for the Heifer Project. Just when we think we have problems, but as we watch the video, Father, somebody's a little worse off than we are. So we're grateful. And we thank you for allowing us to give to that project that helps so many across the globe. Father, they still our brothers and sisters. And the song says, when we all get to heaven. <laughs> Looking forward to that day. We still sing, sing and shout in victory. Father, I got my shout ready for that day. And Father, we thank you for all the missions that you allowed us to fulfill. We thank you for the gift givers. We thank you for all those that give behind the scene. Father, their effort means so much for those that have so little. And Father, we ask that you come in the congregation Somebody came to the altar today to, to surrender it all to you. The problems that they have, the situations that they're going through, the struggles that they have. Somebody's mourning the loss of a loved one. Father, give them strength to carry on. Father, I thank you for our pastor today. Father, his family, bless him. Father, keep him. Father, we thank you for the message that we're going to receive today. Let our cup be true, let's run it over with, this, with the word, with the spirit. 
Father, we thank you for letting your light shine to, to see less of us and more of you. I thank you for all that are attendance today, those that are giving, watching online, giving back. How can we ever repay you? You gave your only begotten son for your children to have a right to the tree of life, to come and say, Father, here I am. Take me. Oh, I'm yours. Father, right now we know you more than enough. And we shall give you the honor, give you the praise, and the glory. And may all of God's people say, Amen. amen. Thank you, Bobby. Can we say amen again? Amen. Let's all stand together as our worship team comes back up to lead us. A lot of our folks are traveling, so please be in prayer for them, finishing up their trips. If you have been on the interstate or on the turnpike, which I have this week, it's just beyond crazy. And I know folks are trying to get back. Tomorrow starts work again, so let's just be in prayer for our sisters and brothers. Those that are out sick, Brother David Weimert, our head usher, is out sick today, among many others. So keep him in your prayers also. Altar is still open. Sometimes my life just don't make sense at all When the mountains look so big And my faith just seems so small So hold me, Jesus Cause I'm shaking like a leaf You have been you be my prince of peace when I wake up in the night and feel the dark it's so hot inside my soul I swear there must be blisters on my heart so hold me, Jesus, because I am shaking like a leaf. You have been king of my glory. Won't you be my prince of peace? Surrender, don't come natural to me. I'd rather fight you something that I don't really want, then take what you give that I need. And I beat my head against so many walls. I'm falling down. I'm falling on my knees. The Salvation Army Band is playing this hymn. And your grace rings out so deep, it makes my resistance seem so thin. So hold me, Jesus, as I'm shaking like a leaf. You have been king of my glory. Won't you be my
Beautiful. Frank and team, y'all may be seated. I don't think I've ever heard that. So perfect for the sermon today. The sermon's going to be more of a teaching style. So sit back for the next couple of hours. <laughs> King of kings and Lord of lords. King of kings, Lord of lords. Oh my goodness gracious. What a great, great teaching that we have. It's on the church calendar every year, right before we begin the four Sundays before Christmas, the Advent Sundays. We're going to have uh, our um, uh, candles up here, um, and we'll have the worship team's going to take charge of that. Each week, we're going to light a different candle on our journey to Bethlehem. And then, of course, we have our Christmas Eve services. Christmas Eve um, is on Sunday this year. So there'll be one service, we'll just do some Christmas carols in the morning and the message, and then that evening at 5 o'clock, the worship team will be leading that service uh, for candlelight. It's always beautiful, amen? amen? So today, we start that journey with what is called Christ the King Sunday. You notice also the white pyramids, we do that intentional. Um, and I always like to lift up, uh, in a teaching like this, the difference between Christ being your King or your Lord and being your Savior. And for some of you, maybe all of you, He is both. But there's probably somebody here, or maybe somebody online, that hasn't moved over into the position of Christ becoming their Lord. Um, and so I would welcome you to do that this morning. Now, for me, I accepted Jesus as my Savior when I was a child. I don't know exactly which time I came to the altar the old traditional way a million times, pouring out my teenage sins to God, and uh, I felt that He saved me, but it wasn't until I uh, reached the ripe age of 19 at the very end of my teenage years that really He became my Lord. And what I mean by that is no longer was He my co-pilot, He became my pilot. Uh, he took charge of my life. Uh, he was my Savior, of course, and forgave me of my sins, but I was following his directions from then on, and that was called sanctification. And it's been ongoing ever since uh, I was 19 years old. It never stops until we get into our heavenly realm. And it's God working on us and molding us and making us into his form. Now, how do we, how do we know what to do when this takes place? First of all, again, the Holy Spirit has to come inside of you. That's your salvation it's a free gift from God. You have to ask Jesus to come into your life. And when you do that, He then lives inside of you and He begins to guide you and direct you in a still small voice. And it's up to you to make the decision to follow Him, to, to let go of selfishness and turn more to selflessness. And that doesn't mean to get rid of everything that's unique about you. It just means that you're in a process, you're in a journey where more of Christ's Spirit is filling you up as you're letting go some of your selfish desires, which is human nature. It's in each and every one of us. And so how do we know what to do? Well, we follow the teachings of Christ. We call it the Bible. When we have chapel each Thursday for Harmony Preschool, we bring out this flag we bring out this flag and sit it right down front. We pledge allegiance. We're teaching the children pledge allegiance to the flag. And then we pledge allegiance to the Christian flag. And then I pick up this big Bible right here on the altar table. And I come down and I say, now we follow God's word. We're a Christian school, a Christian preschool. And we sing together. And I want you to sing it with me. I know you know it. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Let's sing it once again. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. With the children, I usually pick up speed. They kind of like that. Uh, and we have a lot of fun with it. Friends, we're to follow God's Word the best of our ability. Why? Because His Spirit lives inside of us. If you're saved, if you've given Him the right to come live inside of you, you have the Spirit of life when you're born, but the Spirit of Christ must 
be welcomed in. And for him to take charge, you have to give him the car keys. You have to let him take charge to be the pilot of your life. Now, the A of our ABCs about following these principles that uh, Irene read to us a few moments ago actually finishes the series of three parables in this chapter. Now, what we have, if you've been with us the last couple of weeks, we had the five foolish bridesmaids that Jesus told the story, and because of their foolishness, they were not able to enter into the wedding feast. And then the second parable we talked about last week, if you were here, where everybody was given a pot of gold or a talent, and they were to uh, share that talent with others. And Brother Mike gave a wonderful message about that. And the one person who had the one talent hid that talent. And it was a great talent. It could be used for the glory of God, used to benefit himself, but he hid that talent. And so therefore, at the end of the story, he's left outside. Now, it's a comparison between the five foolish bridesmaids not being able to enter in. He's left outside. In the parable today, we have something very interesting that takes place that compares to those predicaments, and that'll be the C of our ABCs. But we have to go to the A first. The Bible says, all nations, all nations will be gathered unto the Lord. All nations. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 10, it says that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, a question should arise in your mind. Well, that doesn't seem to be happening in our world. We have atheists, we have agnostics, we have Islamic, we have Orthodox Jews, we have people that just don't believe in anything, you know, and I mean, just crazy. We have mystics, we have the Wicca religion, which is a growing religion. We have all kinds of stuff. Well, what do you mean Jesus is making this statement? It's just not true. I believe it is true. I believe that if you do not bow before Jesus in this world, you will bow before him. I believe he is the entrance to eternity, that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Whether you believe in him or not, you're going to believe in him in that moment and you'll have to reconcile with him your eternity. So the best place to get that settled is right here, asking him right here to forgive you of your sins. And when that takes place again, he begins to lead us and to guide us and to rebuke us and to teach us. Now, the idea of Israel, part of our history, a lot of people have been wondering about, are we at the end of the world? A lot of people asking pastors about that, and some of you are probably thinking of that. Some of you may be saying, I'm just trying to make one paycheck after another, brother. I don't know about Israel. Well, Israel is part of our history and is part of our future as well. And there's a lot going on in the land of Israel. And so I've been reading a lot of the Old Testament. And over the next few weeks, I'll be able to plug you in on what I think has taken place over there. Do I believe that we're at the end of the age? The Bible does say that there's going to be an end of the age. These parables teach that. But are we at the end of that age? Now, I don't know. I don't know. There's so much mystery, so much symbolism. It would be very easy to try to work it all out mathematically and logically. But God's ways are not our ways. I do know today we're closer than we were yesterday. Somebody say amen. I know that that's taken place. But I'm, I'm not sure if in the chain of events with the struggles in the Middle East, there have been struggles in the Middle East forever. And there will be struggles in the Middle East until the end of time. And we are to pay, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for the peace. And that affects not just the Israelis, but that also affects the Messianic uh, Jews, that affects the Palestinians, that even affects the Hamas. Now, Hamas is a terrorist organization. This is not just the Palestinian Empire. This is a terrorist organization that is running the Gaza Strip. And that is the turmoil as they continue to attack. And praise God, the hostages are being released, at least the ones that are alive at the present time. And hopefully everyone that is still alive 
will be released. Now, Israel became a nation again in 1948. They had not been a nation in all these years. But friends, we as Christians, we are the fulfillment. We were grafted in, the Scriptures says, uh, as Gentiles into their faith. And all the promises that were given to the Jewish people of the Old Testament are your promises now as we join together as children of God. And in Romans 9, 10, and 11, it says that someday, and maybe it'll be the final day, all Israel, will be saved, will be saved. And what does all that mean? We do not know, but they will bow before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The big question for us today is, are you ready? Because your time might come. You know, I don't know if the end of times of the age is today or tomorrow, but your time might be. You know, at the early service, John Woodstuff was here and just a few days ago, his dear bride, all of you know Sherry, entered into the other side. Just a year ago, uh, our missionary Bob Wood came here to, to seek wisdom and guidance and fundraising for Honduras, and he said he was feeling poorly, took him to the Tampa hospital, and within a few months, he was on the other side. You are not promised the rest of this day. You may not be here tomorrow. You may not be here tomorrow. Are you ready? Your end, your resurrection, your time that you have to face Jesus may be today. Are you ready? I think the parable is for us right now, right now. Now, the B of our ABCs that we have is very, very interesting. He says, blessed are those that take care of the hurting in this world. For if you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. The B of our ABCs, you are blessed if you take care of the hungry. If you take care of the hungry. And you know, this church right here does that wonderfully. Uh, the ministry we have to the homeless, we have what we call, you all have heard us say it over and over, the J dollars. If you have a dollar bill that has a J on it, it belongs to Jesus. So we encourage you and anything else that's green to make sure you give it to Jesus when you can. But we take care of the homeless and we know that it goes to the homeless and, and it's used for the right kind of things as we buy tents. Mike and Susie Phillips lead that program right here. So we're called to minister, to do that. We're also called to minister to those that are hungry and thirsty. Thirsty. You know, when I thought of that, prayed about it, I thought about Jesus on the cross when he said, I thirst. Do y'all remember that? That was one of the last seven words of Christ on the cross. I thirst. And they ran and they took a sponge and dipped it into some wine and held it up to him on the cross. And he turned away because he had already said he would not taste of, of the fruit of the vine until he came again and had that wedding feast. And so what he made clear to them is I thirst for righteousness, righteousness. Now, what is righteousness? Well, the Bible says, blessed are you if you take care of the stranger the stranger, those you don't even know about. The word ark, A-R-K, is a great acronym. It's used throughout the Bible. The Noah's Ark of the Old Testament that brought freedom and, and a new civilization, a new world, and the rainbow, the promise of God. It's a beautiful story in the Old Testament. Then the Ark of the Covenant that carried the Ten Commandments. You've heard me share before, the Ark in the Old Testament was about the size of our altar table. This is what it's symbolical of. And it had the Ten Commandments of God inside of it, and they'd carry the Ark, and that's where God's presence was in the Old Testament when they set it up in the holy temple there. Well, the word ARK or the acronym A-R-K, uh, we can look at those as random kindness, uh, active, random, what's the word, uh, random kindness, Acts of random kindness. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Acts of random kindness. Do you have the heart <laughs> to, to give a, a, a kindness to someone else? Maybe a, a family member, a friend, a neighbor, uh, maybe somebody at the gas station in the grocery store, maybe somebody at the football game. Well, maybe not there, but in some other places. Do you, can you give an act of random kindness? Do you have that attitude in your heart to take care of the stranger? The one that, that needs to be clothed. Well, I mean, we could go on and talk about how we take care in our pantry here in Second Life Thrift Store. Many of you work there. And if there's a need in the community, somebody has like a burnout or some kind of special need, they will just give you the clothes. We're, we're good at that as well. You know, but when I prayed about this, the Lord reminded me of that we're called to disciple 
that we're called to disciple, we need to form small groups. Brother Ray and I have been talking about that, and the best thing we've seen of that so far has been the step studies from the Celebrate Recovery, and that's fantastic. But all of us need to be a part of, of groups that are helping each other and sharing and praying for each other. Some of you have that, some of you don't. You need to pray for a sister or brother to be with you. You know, the Christianity is not meant to be by yourself. We are to work together and listen and pray for each other and lean on each other. It's just amazing that it can take place. We are called by God, and we are blessed if we do these things. Visit the prisons. We have the Kairos ministry. One of our new members has become one of the leaders in the prison ministry. Before him, we had Steve Shelley here. And I know some of you helped Steve and minister to the prisons, and some of you write letters to prisoners. But there's other people that are in prison, not behind real bars, but bars they've created themselves you know, that they're, they're locked in and they're hurting and they're struggling and, and they need a friend. They need a child of God to come along their path. Amen? That's what they need. That's what we're called to do. That, that's the desire of, of God's heart, so it's got to be our desire as well. Blessed are you when you take care of the sick. Our Stephen ministers are amazing with that, coming along beside people that are grieving or hurting in some way and ministering. And because that we've got the age of our congregation continues to excel, may I say it that way. So because of that, we're thinking about reinstituting our communion stewards like we used to do during COVID, where they will go to the homes of folks that can't come here. They're worshiping with us right now online, or they're in the hospitals or rehabs, and, and go there and help them and bless them and take care of them, offer them Holy Communion as well. There's so many opportunities for us to share the load with others. God wants us to do this. Blessed are you if you do these things. Now, I know we can all improve. All of us can. But the heart of God is to minister to these. The first four commandments of the Ten Commandments is our relationship with God. The final six is our relationship with each other. Relationship with God, relationship with each other. It forms the cross. The Ten Commandments of God, and they are still vital even today. Can you say amen? amen? Now that takes us to the C of the ABCs. Cursed are you if you do not follow these things. Now salvation is a free gift, as I mentioned earlier, but he said, cursed are you if you do not follow these things. It all comes down to a decision, a decision you have to make. Am I going to be a follower of Christ? He called us to make disciples, not converts. Not somebody to just have an emotional experience and just get excited about Jesus and then it stops right there. We are called to make disciples. Go into all the world, Jesus said, and make disciples. You help a person, guide them, walk along beside them, minister to them, love on them, help them to be the person that I have created them to be. Because God's hands are wide open and you are his hands that are reaching out into the community in which you live. And if we do not follow that, the Scripture says, Cursed are you. That is the same thing as the five foolish bridesmaids being left outside. That's the same thing as the one that had the opportunity of the gold that did not use it, was not allowed to be a part of eternity in heaven. And now we have the concept of cursed are those who will not follow me. Not that God doesn't love them, not that God doesn't care for them, but he has set it in motion just like gravity. And friends, I'm you know, I can stand right here and jump and believe all I can in the power of Jesus that I'm going to float up there, but I'm telling you, I'm going to fall down right now because of gravity, because my Jesus has created gravity for my protection and my understanding in this world in which I live in. And so this is a concept that is set in stone. Blessed are you if you do this. Cursed are you if you go another direction. It all comes down to decisions. Now, it's hard to make the right decisions many times at various. And you have to start with little decisions. You know, is it going to be selfless or selfish? You know, and when you make those little decisions that don't seem to be that important, it begins to filter through your lifestyle and can take control of you. So we need to be people that are givers, not takers. We need to be people that are hungry for the things of God. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. 
The Lord took me to Joshua. What a great book in the Bible. I've been reading, as I said earlier, the book of Exodus, chapter 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, and 25. Then it's where God came down to man. He's talking about when the kingdom of heaven comes down. He comes down on a mountain and a cloud covers the mountain. Many people praising and worshiping God have seen this cloud of God forming around them. It's a symbol of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And in Exodus 20 through 25, there's a fire at the very top and it's rumbling and it's like a volcano. And Moses enters in for 40 days. He's in that cloud, in that presence of God. And others are having to to deal with that. And the Bible says, even in the New Testament, talking about that story, that everybody was just trembling in fear. It was powerful, majestic. That was the power of Almighty God there. And dear friends, Joshua was right there. Joshua was there when Moses held up the staff and the Red Sea parted and all of the Israelites went across on dry ground. Your forefathers and your foremothers, this is your history as a Christian. And they in faith went across on dry ground and the Egyptians, the evil came after them and the waters came back across and destroyed the Egyptian empire of that day. Well, friends, Joshua was right there and now Moses is gone. Moses is gone, and and Joshua's got to make a decision. Is he going to follow God or not? Moses is in heaven, and all these people are ready now to enter into the promised land. And they're at the Jordan River. Now, it's not the Red Sea like Moses and the people did 40 years earlier, but you can't cross the Jordan River. There's no tugboats. There's no way to get across. And he's praying unto God. And you know what it says in the first nine verses in the book of Joshua? Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 through 9, three times it says, Joshua, you be very strong and courageous. Now, why would Joshua have to be strong and courageous? Can't God just wipe out the, uh, the river and just do whatever he wants to do? No, God doesn't work that way most of the time. God lets you go into the storm. But God says, I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And so Joshua has to be strong and courageous. What does that mean? That means getting the church with him. He said, you guys carry in the ark. Remember the Ten Commandments? Pick it up. Let's go. And I'm sure they're like, Joshua, aren't you going to raise your rod or something and, you know, split the Jordan like Moses? I mean, you know, what do you mean? And he said, let's go. God just said, go. Well, that doesn't look. We've got to go right. Are you serious? Yes, go. And as soon as... As they step in the Jordan River, the waters part. Are you following Christ? Are you following Christ as soon as you step in the Jordan River? And they struggle. They got on the other side, but they struggled. And at the end of Joshua's life, Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, they are struggling. The book of Deuteronomy gives, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do this. I'm going to follow God or I'm going to go back to the pagan idolatry. Even after all that, they were struggling, just like our world today. And you know what Joshua says in 24, verse 15? He said, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's what you need to say for me and my house. Does that mean your children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews are all going to follow God? Nope, nope. But it means when they're in your house, this is what you and your house follows. This is your teaching. This is your principle. Everybody has their own decisions to make. What is your decision on Christ the King Sunday? Now, you know, when I think of Christ the King and following him, I think about Revelation, the last book of the Bible, chapter 19, verse 11, when we do have the very end, a new heavens, a new earth, and it says the heavens are torn asunder and Jesus comes riding out on a white horse. Can you imagine that? Wow. Riding out on a white horse with all the angels and all the army. And that's when heaven becomes earth. I mean, it comes down. That's the climax here at the end of times, whenever that takes place. That's what I want to see. But what do you do then with Isaiah 53, where Jesus is described as the suffering servant and the cross is described and the, and the beatings on his back and pulling out his beard in those prophecies in Isaiah. Just terrible things. And by his stripes you are healed. What do you do with that? That doesn't sound like the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that I want to serve. It sounds like a suffering servant. He's both. He's both. And right now, he is still the suffering servant. Right now, his hands are like this. Right now, he's reaching out. And as I said earlier, you 
are his hands. You are his hands. Why did he do it like this? Doesn't he know I'm going to mess it up? He believes in you more than you believe in yourself. I came across this passage, and this is what I said earlier at the beginning of the sermon that fits that last song so perfectly. This is Zechariah, and I pulled it out of my Wesley Bible. I have a different, different Bibles. This has uh, got a lot of study guides from John Wesley's teachings, the founder of, of Methodism. And uh, this is Zechariah out of the Old Testament, one of the prophets, chapter 9, verse 9. There's no doubt in anybody's mind that studies this, that Zechariah is about 500 years before Christ was born. I mean, you know, there's nobody argues that. That's just, that's, they know that. So listen to what it says. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. This is Christ the King Sunday. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of God for the people of God. You have been my king of glory. Now be my prince of peace. Let us pray. I'll ask the praise team to come back up. Lord, is there somebody here today that's struggling with even a relationship with you? Maybe they've not invited you in. So please, right now, if that's you, just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I believe in you. Just say that in your own way and in your mind. Don't have to use those exact words. Just confess to him you're a sinner. Ask him to come into your life and forgive you, and he will. That's your salvation. Just do that right now. Do it. But most of us are struggling with the ongoing life and falling short. Repent right now. Just say, Jesus, forgive me. You know I have messed up some stuff. Forgive me. Be sincere. Just tell him. But you've you got to tell him. You can't just say, I know he knows. That doesn't work. Of course he knows. But that has nothing to do with your relationship. You confess to him, say, I've screwed up. I have. Now ask him to forgive you. Tell him you want to be his disciple. You want to follow him. Tell him you want to be blessed. And you don't want to be cursed. Tell him he... He's now your king. You're going to do the best you can to let him be your pilot. Give him your keys, not your co-pilot. Right now, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's all stand together. The altar is open, friends, as we worship the Lord.
Beautiful. May the blessings of Christ be with you. Thank you so much for spending this Sunday after Thanksgiving. We'll meet you again this coming week. Hopefully you can join in the midweek activities. Be sure and fellowship around the coffee table and sign the prayer quilts. Stop by the prayer bear and also the prayer wall if you have the opportunity. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.